the question here is, which of these two methods is more likely to provide adequate vertical control during the retraction of the upper anterior teeth? Well, I'm proposing here a, a quiz so we can understand what's the best way to do the retraction of upper anterior teeth in that specific situation. And what is this, this specific situation that I'm proposing in this quiz here? Well, first of all, let's understand what's the problem that we are facing now. We have a patient hyperdivergent pattern with excessive exposure in lip in, 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 uh, in a rest position of the lips, meaning she shows more than what is expected to have. She shows what is um, more seen as something that is not pleasant. A lot of uh, exposure of upper anterior your teeth in a rest lip position. And I want to improve this. I want to improve this condition here because when I do the retraction, I know that if I expose a little more than that, a little bit more than that, I will have a bad outcome of the treatment, from, the, from my treatment. And I want to avoid this. I want to prevent excessive exposure during retraction. So what is the best option for us here? See here, because of the hyperdivergent pattern and because of the excessive vertical displacement of the maxilla, this patient cannot seal her lip passively. I want to improve that. So what can I do for that? And the two options that I gave to you, uh, they were like this. First option, using the same strategy, using buckle shelf, I'm sorry, using the, in the upper arch, the ICC as anchorage in both sides, I need to do the retraction because I have a class two case and I want to correct the class two case by means of retracting upper teeth. And if during this retraction, I can also do the intrusion of posterior segment, it will be an up for my treatment. Something that I will help me to do the correction of the class two by means of the auto rotation of the mandible, meaning a counterclockwise rotation of the mandible. So I want to do that, but what is going to happen when I do this? Because I may expect something, I may plan for something, but if I don't understand the biomechanics, I may well end up with the opposite of that. Let me show to you here. Second option would be the retraction of upper teeth with extraction of the bicusp, first bicusp in this example. So let's compare these two strategies. First one, uh, the retraction of the entire upper arch in one piece. We can do that. Of course, we have some uh, indications for that. We, may we, we must have distal to the second upper molar enough bone for doing the distalization. I, may, I, I need to have also... Uh, a good bone, good bone, providing the, the distalization of upper arch with more, um, uh, being more predictable in this case. So I'm positioning the ICC and I'm doing the retraction like this. This is just one example because we have other options. We may use high hooks and I'm gonna do a video for that because it's not just a high hook. What matters here is exactly the same thing, controlling the torque, controlling the line of action of the force. The moment generated by the line of action of the force must be counter clock, must be counteract by the moment of the couple, just for controlling the inclination. But I'm gonna show to you now that even when I use the torque, I, will, I won't control one thing here. Well, I'm doing the distalization because I want to correct the class two uh, relationship between upper and lower. And the center of rotation, the center of resistance of the maxillary arch is positioned here approximately five, six millimeters high in relation to the center of the crown or the premolar crowns and in between premolars. So I'm doing the, re the retraction using the line of action of the force in the lower position in relation to the center of resistance of the maxillary arch. But remember, for that, I must secure rigidity so the maxillary arch can be considered as one piece. 
not di many different uh, pieces of uh, bodies being moved. One piece. So I must have a rigid arch wire. So I'm ligating the whole maxillary arch, okay? So I'm doing this now using the line of action of the force like this. You know, the line of action of the force can be positioned in this, uh, the, the, the vector of that I'm representing can be positioned wherever in the line of action of the force. And it's not moving, it's not changing anything. Just to consider the scale that I'm using to put this vector here. Like, let's say 300 grams used here. And I'm gonna generate, generate, of course, as you know, a moment. The moment of the force is going to be clockwise in this sense. Clockwise moment, meaning in this case, I will have a vertical component in the maxillary arch, in posterior segment upwards, in anterior segment downwards, and I'll have also the movement, the movement, distal movement of the maxilla that I want. This is good for me. Huh? I want a vertical displacement here, an intrusive vector here, because this will allow me to rotate my mandible back uh, forward and upwards, which is good. Closing the bite, closing the uh, decreasing the lower anterior face height. So it's everything positive. But is it true? Let's say we're doing this now like this. Perfect world would be something like that. Generating a space so I could rotate the mandible counterclockwise like this. Well, beautiful. So this is the option that I want. But is this the case? Really what we are going to have here? If we don't understand that we have another thing taking place here, we may mix everything. I, I still have to deal with this because if I'm not uh, filling the gap, filling the slot completely, and I'm not, because I use 1725, 1925, and even 2125, still have a gap. We still have a gap. And the force is being applied this way. No, I'm applying the force higher. No, no, you're not applying the force in a higher position. Why is not? Because the contact that you're seeing here is one point contacting the break, the slot of the break. So you can't consider this the line of action of the force. The line of action of the force is actually this one because this is one body and this is another point that is exerting the force this way. If you had a slot completely uh, uh, filled here, you would consider the line of action of the force in a higher position, okay? Because we would have a, one body, a different body, but not like this. You have play inside the slot. So you need to respect that play. What's going to happen here is something like this. Because of the play, you are going to lose inclination. And if you don't understand the torque that you need to apply at this point of the treatment, and I'm not focusing on that now, but I can teach you how to do that. Go to my class and I'm going to teach you there. You are going to have something like this in your system. And this is bad. This is bad. No, clever. It's not bad because I have extremely proclinal to your teeth. Yes, it is bad because you don't want it to happen. This is uncontrolled tipping. You want to have controlled tipping, meaning you must have another moment in the system so you can position the center of rotation of this movement wherever you want. And you want it close to the apex. And you can't do that if you don't have another moment. The moment provided by the torque, the moment provided by the couple that must be generated during this movement of retraction. You see, you need to understand better the torque. And what if you have another inclination, for example, like this? What's going to happen if you don't control the torque? You're going to have the distalization of the entire upper arch plus the moment that you already know, and now we have this. And you're not having the space here to provide the counterclockwise rotation of the mandible. You actually have the opposite. What is the opposite here, guys? The opposite is you're going to 
rotate the mandible clockwise because you're generating a contact here that is that is uh, forcing the mandible to come to clockwise rotate, increasing the lower into your face height, increasing the exposure, gingival expo gingival display during the smile because now you have this this. Uh, relative extrusion of upper anterior teeth, so everything is worse now. Why? Because you couldn't manage the torque, because you couldn't manage the understanding of the biomechanics in this case. So beware of this. Maybe you want something in your mechanics, but you're not having that because you couldn't control, you couldn't even understand what's going on. I'm not telling that you're not able to do that. I'm telling, I'm doing this, I'm telling this, I'm, I'm saying this for those people who, who say that they don't need to understand torque. They don't need to understand biomechanics because they use aligners. You see many situations like that when you use aligners and people say it's because of the thickness of the aligner posterior segment. It is not. It is not. It is not. Definitely not. What's going on? You are losing inclination and you are contacting the anterior segment, maybe generating also necrosis here huh? because of the very, very, very strong contact in this position here. So this is bad. This is bad. And I'm going to prove to you that you can change this way. You can change everything if you understand biomechanics and if you understand the torque. So this is the option one. Tomorrow, I'll come back with you with the option two. You may think that the option two is better than this one, but I'm going to prove to you that it is not, okay? So stay with me, with, stick with me, so you can discuss everything about torque and everything about biomechanics, but you need to study, okay? See you tomorrow, guys. Bye-bye.